What is determination to you? What, what does it mean? What does determination mean? Determination is knowing what you want. I think being very honest about where you are now. Um, because you have to know your starting point if you've got a goal, if you're trying to achieve something. And it's it's about not giving up. It's about doing everything you have to, doing things you like doing, doing things you don't like doing. And th- there's belief in there as well. You know, if, if you're determined to, to reach a goal, there will be points which is really hard and it feels like it's not worth it and you might be going backwards. But you, you have that belief in yourself that, that you will get there. And um, I, th- I think probably... People who know me, they would be polite if they say I was determined. There's other other names I've been called as well, but uh, I, I think it's that that ability to to push yourself really hard to to believe that you're doing the right thing. And would you say that that is your are those are your main assets? I'm sure you've got loads more, but I think determination, stubbornness, um, being able to dream, um, being able to have that sort of high end goal. I think a lot of young people struggle with that, you know, to, to know what they want to do. I think those things are incredibly important. Um, and the resilience. In the whole of my career, I lost more races than I won. I just won some big important ones. And people forget the, the first couple of years I competed or, you know, that those things. How did you keep motivated? Okay, because you've still got to get up in the morning, you've still got to read, you've got to work. And, you know, people are telling you, you're not going to do it, what the hell are you doing? How do you keep motivated? I break that down into a couple of different categories. Um, I always think it's very easy that we could sit here now and decide that we wanted to make a million pounds over the next um, you know, six months doing a particular project. And we could sit here and imagine that wouldn't it be lovely to to do that and you would go and buy a yacht or whatever it is with your money and I would do whatever it was with But actually it's very difficult to an extent unless you are hugely motivated by that towards goal. Sometimes you can just sit and dream about that and not do anything about it. What I did was I did a lot of balancing of the towards goal of shooting the subpar round and the feeling of how great that would be with the humiliation of not doing it. So the away from goal. And approximately two thirds of us are much more motivated by moving away from something, moving away from the pain than we are towards the exciting thing. So if you can metaphorically push that button in yourself mm-hmm. towards the thing, to moving away from that situation that you're in now, whether it's the bad golfer or a bad business or, you know, a house that you hate being in or, you know, any type of goal. Rather than, if you keep focusing on that and about the fact that you're fed up with that, that you're fed up with the humiliation of that, even though it's really quite an unpleasant emotion, it can be a very strong motivator to get yourself up off the couch, turn standers off and go and do something about it. That propelled you to do it. Exactly. Whatever, yeah. So I focused a lot. When I would sit, when I come home in the evening and I was tired and, you know, really, obviously, as I say, I was annoying my wife and, you know, to get myself off the sofa and back up to the range, that's what I did. I focused on the people who were saying it wasn't possible and how I wanted to prove them right. And that's the thing that would catapult me up much more so than the, uh, perhaps thinking how great the, the subpar round would be and the feeling... What does it take? I mean, with all the celebrities you've met, sports people, actors, can you do you reckon there's some kind of common denominators? Yeah, hundred percent there is, and I, and I know this because I had to do a speech in my old school. I went back there and I was thinking, what can I talk to them about? And and it it definitely is preparation, and preparation means practice. And the sort of people I interview are um, uh, uh, sportsmen or entertainers or artists. And the one thing they have in common, let's just take a couple of them here, three of my favourites, David Beckham. I did a documentary with David Beckham. And the reason why I did a documentary with David Beckham is people in this country were saying, oh, he's not very good anymore. And it was it's kind of the time where he was just moving to Madrid. Mm. Oh, he's not good, he's not this, he's not that. And I met him at an opening of an Adidas store. And the first time I met him and I started talking to him, and as soon as I talked about football, his eyes light up. And that's what we wanted to talk about. And I knew this guy was obsessed with football. And I thought, that's some unfair that, that everyone was doing Bram Beckham. He doesn't care. All he cares about is money. And it's so not true. And you could tell. And from that minute, I, I spoke to his agent and I said to him, let's do a documentary with him because I think the, the public, you know, I'm a football fan and I didn't know. They need to know how passionate he is about football. And as I started making the documentary, what comes out of it is that whilst... It, you know, He's obviously had a great social life and everything. But whilst everybody else was getting changed after training, David Beckham was practising free kicks. 
practicing and practicing and practicing. I remember speaking to David James, and David James said, I never liked Beckham when I first met him, but then we went to England once, and we were all getting changed, showered, and we're out going to the car, and I looked out on the pitch, and Beckham's still practicing free kicks, and Beckham used to say to Jamo, can you stay out so I can practice free kicks against you? He wanted to be the best, so he practiced for longer, for harder hours. Number two, Noel Gallagher. I like to say Noel Gallagher's a friend of mine now, great guy. Noel Gallagher was busy practicing guitars, songs, everything for years. He was you know, a roadie within Spiral Carpet and stuff. The guy was dedicated. And you know, you, you always say people have their lucky breaks. I'm not sure they do. I think they've worked mm. and they've prepared and they've got themselves. A, they always say um, luck is where preparation meets opportunity. I remember hearing that years ago and I've always thought that. They prepare themselves. They really spend a lot of time uh, um, uh, writing songs, knowing the chords, knowing the tunes. When they broke for Oasis, they, he had two albums worth of material there, ready to go, top quality material. And so he was busy. And when he's standing on stage going, we're the best band in the world, he knows he's got a, bat, a catalogue of songs he can tune out. He hasn't got to go and write some and get that self-doubt. He already knows he's got 20-odd tracks there which he can say are great songs, which he knows... Right, and the other one who I always think is brilliant is is um, Ray Winston, who's mm. just a really charismatic man. But he made it very early in things like Scum and and um, uh, Quadrophenia. But that body of work that he had when he was young, when it came back, when he had his second time round, because it was quite a lot of wilderness years for him. He knew how to get there. He knew how to 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 switch on for the cameras. He he had the ability to do it. And all these guys have the same thing in common. They've worked hard and they've prepped and they've they know their art. And so you know, there's three different professions there, but they all know their art. To compete for your country at that level is it's just incredible because it's it's the the peak of anything that you could ever wish to do. So although world championships, Europeans, you know, other competitions were important, for me, competing at Paralympics was, was all I wanted to do. Uh, I competed at five. Uh, and, you know, w when I think about how many friends and colleagues along the way who were all trying to do that, who maybe didn't even get to compete at one, to, to then be at five was amazing. And I, I always remember from my first one, uh, through to my fourth, always knowing I was going to do another four years, that I I wanted that moment again because it's the crowd, it's it's you have the best in the world who are there, and uh, it's it's great, huge pressure, uh, and I remember, you know, before each of my finals, being in the the sort of warm up track, you know, about two hours before, thinking, what am I doing here? Am I good enough? You know, you ask yourself all those questions. And that's the point where you have to look back at your training and, and your preparation and know that you've done everything you could. So I like training. Training was good. I mean, it'd be nice to not have to do quite as much of it. But, but the only way I knew I was going to have a chance of winning was to train 15 times a week, was to do everything in my life to make sure when I was on that start line, I had the best chance. Because, you know, after a race at Paralympic final, you can't say, excuse me, can we just do that again, please? Mm. You know, I, I, you, know you, you, you have... 16 seconds, 28 seconds, whatever it is, you, you have this short space of time to prove that you're good and you can't go back. Uh, and, and in particular, I, I suppose, obviously, kind of as important as your training is your mindset. You must be incredibly strong from a mind point of view. The, the mindset mm. is, is hugely important because it's about having that confidence to know that even if perhaps training hasn't gone right, that you can pull yourself back around. You know, there's definitely races where I was on the start line where I wasn't the best on the start line. Um, but, you know, having lots of experience, I, I did a lot of um, different level races. One thing that I did do was race against the British men a lot. Um, and they used to push me around the road. They used to make my life really hard. But then when I was racing against the best women in the world, um, I'd, I'd been through just about every experience you could imagine. So, um, I remember there's one race where my, my husband, uh, half marathon, literally pushed me into every curb he could find. He pushed me into every corner. You know, he, he you know, messed around, tried to drop me out of the back, back of the pack. And, and then when you're racing in, in a race that really matters, if that happens, you've, you've got the skills to deal with it. Um, and I think that was one of my strengths was knowing that you don't want the major decision in the race to be in the Paralympic final. You need to have had all those skills and you need to have practised everything you possibly could in the lead up to it. 
Yeah, and as yourself, you from a very early age, you were already planning. I'm going to be in the marathon. I'm going to be in in the para, in the Paralympics. So obviously, that that mindset and that drive takes you there. The mindset and the drive is hugely important um, to make yourself train every day. Mm. Actually, because there are some times when, if it's minus five and it's mm. foggy outside, and you have to do twenty miles training. You're not there going, yay! I'm a GB athlete, aren't I? Like you know, and that there are moments when you get to train in very nice places around the world, and it's 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 different. But when you're tired, and you've got blisters, and you're in the middle of a winter training session where it feels forever before you're going to compete again, you have to have something that makes you go out and do the things you don't like doing. You know, not not necessarily the things you like doing tend to be the things that you're good at, but you get most improvement from the doing the things that that you maybe don't like or not so good at doing. And I think that's one of the things that I was good at was making myself do do the hard graft because you knew that's all pennies in the bank. It all makes a difference for when you come to that start line. So, you know, my Paralympic career, five games, 11 goals is 19 and a half minutes. You know, I didn't have very long to prove myself. Um, so for me, that's why I trained hard because I knew I had this ultimately limited time to achieve. I'm a big fan of the word resilience and, and what it means. What does it mean to you? Resilience means actually having quite a thick skin. Mm -hmm. um, I think because sport and, and my life in politics is, is quite public. So people will come and tell you what they think, uh, whether you've had a good race, a bad race, what you've worn on TV, what your hair's like. And a lot of the time they don't mean to be rude. They just care. You know, because if you've been on TV or they've come to watch you race, they're part of that experience. So it's it's learning to deal with that. It's learning to deal with how people look at you and how people judge you. Because people do ju people make judgments on me because I'm in a wheelchair, because I'm a woman, because I'm Welsh, because I'm a mum, because I work in London mm -hmm. but I live in the North East. And it's learning to deal with all those. And I think resilience is about being comfortable in your own skin, of just knowing that you're doing the best you can, that, you know, you're working really hard and that, you know, you're, you, you have this goal and dream and that's, that's what you're trying to achieve. Because when you look at other people's careers, you just always think they win, they win, they win, they win and it's all easy and it's lovely and they just turn up and they do it. And actually that's not mm -hmm. for anybody. You know, that's, that's not how it is. It's, it's hard, it's painful. You know, you have moments of success, you have moments where you just think you can't do it. And actually, that's the reality. And that's why you need to have that, that resilience and that belief in yourself.